This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin and big blockheads, in other words, big blockers. Lately there's been an attempt on Twitter and elsewhere to try to rehabilitate Roger Ver, his failed fork of Bitcoin called Bcash, and his love of big blocks in a blockchain. People who listened to Roger in the past got absolutely wrecked. Here's a chart of Bcash versus Bitcoin and BTC is clearly the winner. There's a famous interview here that Roger Ver did with uh, John Carvalho in which he rage quit. Just to give you an idea of Dear Roger Ver's personality. Cash, people point at you as, as somebody that would be the source Continue of all insulting of insulting me? I'm not interested in continuing on this. It's Bitcoin Cash. Get it straight and if you do that again, I'm gonna end the interview because I'm not interested in being insulted, okay? I'm, I'm promoting Bitcoin Cash. The reason that Roger Ver wanted to call it Bitcoin Cash was to rub off some of the glory of Bitcoin onto it. If you say call it Bcash, it just doesn't have the same ring. So this end interview ended very badly, as did Roger Ver's fork of Bitcoin, as did the fork of Bcash, which is BSV. Here we can see the company that Roger Ver has kept over the years, Craig Wright, the scammer, and Calvin Ayer, who financed the whole thing. And now Craig Wright's assets have been put under a worldwide freeze. So you have to be very careful of the company you keep all of these big blockers caused a lot of problems for themselves and for their followers. Now here's the Bitcoin blockchain as it exists today, as it sounds like it's just a chain of blocks and inside of each of these blocks is a few thousand transactions. These are, this is the latest block right here. These are blocks that are being mined. So that's the blockchain. This blockchain is downloaded and stored and used by Bitcoin nodes, which are found all over the world. There are about 18,500 reachable nodes and many more that are unreachable. And these are spread all over the world and each has their own copy of the blockchain, which makes the system very decentralized and very robust. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. Clicking that subscribe button really helps. Click the like button, the thumbs up button, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future topic. Share this video with a friend or family member. So we have the blockchain, we have nodes. When you set up a Bitcoin node, the first thing that your node does is to download the whole Bitcoin blockchain from the beginning, from January 2009. And it goes through and it verifies all of the transactions to make sure that money hasn't been spent twice, for example, the so-called double spending problem. It's very important that regular people all around the world are able to download the whole Bitcoin blockchain in order to run their own nodes and be able to verify all past historical transactions rather than merely trusting someone else to do that for them. And also this is necessary for an individual and a node in order to make Bitcoin transactions directly without needing to trust someone else's node. So if you use Bit if you move Bitcoin using Coinbase or Trezor or something like this, you're usually trusting their node instead of using your own node. Now part of this process includes the IBD, which stands for Initial Blockchain Download. This is constrained by your internet bandwidth. We want to make sure the blockchain is not too big so people in developing countries with slower internet can still download the blockchain in a reasonable amount of time. The size of the UTXO set also matters. These are chunks of Bitcoin that haven't been spent yet because this is stored in a node's RAM. So we don't want the UTXO set to get too large. One of the problems with, for example, ordinals and stamps and this, this sort of stuff is that it has bloated the UTXO set as we've spoken about in other videos. Now your node needs to be able to verify every single Bitcoin transaction, as we said, since 2009, make sure there's no double spending, as we said, and also make sure that no consensus rules were violated. And so if the blockchain is too large and the blocks are big, the blockchain is large, and there are too many transactions that could take a very, very long time. So this is another reason that smaller blocks make sense. If blocks become too big, this begins to penalize those without access to more expensive hardware and internet connections. And if regular Bitcoiners all over the world, we want people to be able to run it in South America and Southeast Asia and Africa, etc. If regular Bitcoiners in these places and elsewhere cannot run a node, then you end up with a situation like Ethereum, where no one runs their own nodes, but everyone chooses instead to outsource node operation to tech companies like Infura. This company Infura just so happens to be owned by a co-founder of Ethereum, Joe Lubin, who also controls the MetaMask wallet 
no conflicts of interest there, of course. So this is why it's very important that you don't outsource your node to someone else. This is Infura. I thought it was funny on the homepage, they call themselves as a company that provides infrastructure for your decentralized application. Well, if your infrastructure is being controlled by a single company, what does that do to the true decentralization of your application? The software may be quote unquote decentralized, but it's running over highly centralized architecture. And when that infrastructure goes down, then it causes a lot of problems as happened in November of 2020, when Infura went down and no one could even figure out how to move their ETH. If the Bitcoin blockchain grows at a faster rate than the underlying hardware capability grows, then it becomes expensive, too expensive or too technically difficult for regular people all around the world, even in wealthier countries, to run their own Bitcoin nodes. So no one in Ethereum, for example, runs their own node simply because it's so complex. Only the most technically savvy can do this. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, it makes very little sense to force everyone in the world to store and verify a transaction. For example, every time one of my kids gets a steamed milk at Starbucks, these are very small transactions, just a couple bucks, and they're not economically dense transactions. Something like the Lightning Network is fine for transactions like this. And for example, that's what Starbucks uses in El Salvador to allow people to pay for coffee. Lightning Network is a layer two solution that uses Bitcoin. It uses the same asset. And this is how money is intended to scale. You have higher layers of money and what happens on those layers, like the Lightning Network, for example, is you batch up transactions, you net them out, and then you settle them on the base layer. You can only imagine how large the Bitcoin blockchain would be if all economic activity took place at the base layer. I think Paul Lamb in a comment from yesterday's video had a very uh, nice analysis of this that I wanted to refer to. According to Paul, uh, Paul writes, according to the World Payments Report 2020 by Capgemini, total non-cash payments globally, in other words, mostly credit cards, I imagine, and, and uh, debit cards, were projected to reach 3 billion transactions per day by the year 2023. To support this scale, blocks would need to be around 5 gigabytes each. Compared to such a scale, there's virtually no difference between current BTC, Bcash, or BSV block sizes because 5 gigabytes is so large. If your blocks are 1, one megabyte or 2 or 8, there's really no comparison. There's a different order of magnitude. Rendering the latter two's initial value proposition moot. In other words, Bcash and BSV have larger block sizes, but they're not nearly large enough to accommodate all the economic activity that would be taking place at the base layer if everything was done at the base layer. To operate at this scale on the base layer, every node on the network would need to download a whopping 5, five gigabytes of data approximately every 10 minutes. The blockchain would grow at a rate of 0.7 terabytes per day, meaning today's average home computer would consume its entire storage capacity in under two weeks. It would be utterly prohibitive for the average person to run a full node, meaning that job would be inevitably centralized and require trust in that central authority, as we mentioned, for example, Google or Amazon or Infura by virtually every user of the network. In other words, you'd have to outsource node operation if the blockchain got too large and complicated to use. Increasing block size was never the solution to the scaling problem. Layering was always the way this technology was going to scale. Adoption simply hasn't reached the level to make this obvious to everyone, which allows these ship coiners to FUD BTC and pump their bags, people like Roger Ver. So thank you, Paul. That was a great comment. Bigger blocks are a little bit like freeways. It doesn't matter how many lanes you add the additional lanes will attract more traffic and you'll end up with traffic jams anyway. You could cover LA, Los Angeles completely with freeways and there would still be traffic jams like these freeways. We don't wanna live in a world where only Amazon, Google, and Microsoft have the computing power to run a Bitcoin node. So for this reason, keeping the cost and complexity of running a Bitcoin node is extremely important for decentralization and thus for the neutrality of Bitcoin. If only big tech runs nodes, then we're forced to trust them, not only not to lie to us about our Bitcoin transactions, but we're also forced to use whichever version of the Bitcoin software that they decide to run in a soft fork or a hard fork. And that software might include things that are bad for us, but good for big tech or good for the government. So don't listen to people like Roger Ver. They've been discredited many years ago and they remain discredited even if they have a new book that they're pushing. Don't fall for the big blockheads and their big block scams. Money is always intended and always has scaled in layers in the gold system, on a gold standard, in the fiat system, and now in 
the Bitcoin system running on a Bitcoin standard. I'll link in the description notes to this video where I dig a little bit deeper into money and scaling. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.